DickLloyd.com. Let's take a look at how you interpret a camera histogram for getting optimal exposures and then how do you cross-check that with Rawdigger to see to see if you're actually getting it right. In other words, proving that you got it right, right meaning optimal exposure, or not. Um, why do you want to do this? Well, um, an optimal exposure is the single biggest way you can improve the technical quality of your images. And doing that outweighs any of these silly tests or metrics about camera noise levels. For example, the latest and greatest camera sensor might improve by a tenth of a stop better than the last one, or maybe a third of a stop. But typical underexposure errors from automatic metering are usually in the range of one to two full stops. In other words, there's a hugely greater potential for improving your image quality based on just getting the exposure right, which auto exposure is not going to do to you, do for you as a rule. I guess it does it to you as a rule, meaning it, it undermines your image quality. So here we have, we're looking at, at a histogram that I took off a of Sony a7R5. It's, it's just a picture of the rear of the LCD of the camera. And it's an outdoor landscape shot. You can see it was shot at ISO 64, f8, a 500th of a second. And for whatever reason, I had dialed in 7 tenths of a stop of exposure compensation. Uh, re in other words, reducing the exposure by 7 tenths, a negative 0 0.7. I don't remember why I did this. I might have just goofed and um, had it there from a previous one. But it's it, note in this case uh, that it's at ISO 64. So this 7 tenths underexposure is actually equivalent to ISO 100 at plus zero, no exposure compensation. In other words, it's what the camera would have given you if you if you shot at ISO 100. Um, you would have had a f still had a 500th of a second. So this is what you would have gotten. So even though I screwed up and uh, I, I could have done better, it's what the camera would have given you at ISO 100. And um, if we look at the histogram over here, we've got a, the overall, and then we've got red, green, and blue. Always look at it as red, green, and blue, because on, on unusual lighting, these can be wildly skewed. You can see the right side is highlights, the, dark, the left side is darks. And so we can see we're well off the darks, so that's good. We do not have a bad exposure here, but you can see there's a gap from red, last to the red to the right, last to the green to the right, last to the blue to the right. This means that the image is definitely underexposed. Uh, how much underexposed? Let's look at that using Rod Digger. Um, here's uh, Rod Digger, which has opened this shot up. And uh, first, let's look at something in the EXIF. If we type in bits here, and filter it, you can say bits per sample is 14. What does that tell us? It tells us that the maximum value you can have off of this camera is around 16,000. I say that because we're about to look at something. Um, you can, uh, but first let's look at what Rod Digger does for you in terms of telling you things. If we click under exposure, we can see these dark areas in the trees are underexposed. Overexposure, uh, nothing. There's 0% uh, overexposure, very minor underexposure. Clearly we could have given this thing more exposure. Now to do, I'm going to look at the histogram next for this image. And uh, that 14 bit thing, the reason I mentioned that is you can, when you drag this out, the scaling can go up to 64,000, but we only have a 14 bit camera. So that means around 16,000 is the limit of what it can actually capture in terms of numbers for the exposure. So what is this telling us here in the raw digger histogram? This is the histogram for the full image and what we can see is the red channel at 4000 each of these large divisions is a stop so the red is underexposed by one, two, more than two stops underexposed. That's like shooting at ISO 400 versus ISO 100. The blue a little better maybe one and a half stops the green is slightly just past this last stop here. So you, you could actually have given this thing almost a full stop more. And realistically, you probably could have given it a full stop more without losing anything important. So this exposure is one full stop darker than it could have been, which increases your noise in the dark areas and even in the midtones pretty substantially. 
um, which I I, I'll, I can show you. Um, so that's how you the basics how you look at a rod digger histogram, and what this has told you is that what you saw in this camera histogram, which looked like it might have been about a stop under, is in fact about a stop under. Now that is not always as clear as it might seem, so we'll, we'll look at another example to see that. But first, let's look at the uh, actual image here. So I'm going to open that up. And we can see this is a, a processing set to no exposure compensation. And you can see that it looks kind of dark. Photoshop shows you this histogram over here, and there's not much going on in these highlights. I've determined that about 8 tenths of a stop gives us a, a brightness that's good. You could go to a full stop. Maybe that, maybe it actually should have a full stop. That's more what my eye would recall. So that one stop underexposure in the camera histogram and in the raw histogram both agree with each other that we're about a stop too low. If we look up here in the in the Photoshop histogram, you can see that pushing it, this one stop here is a push. You can see that's brought up the highlights right to the end, but not blown them out. In fact, if I click the Highlight, so we see a few red patches pop up. So that's just about perfect. If we now open this file and then um, look at the histogram, you can see that um, nothing's actually blown out. We got a beautiful histogram that goes all the way from blacks on the left to right up to the edge, but not quite to it, except for some tiny little areas. That's what you want to see in a, in a wide range image. It's a perfect histogram. If I um, reopen this image uh, without that one stop push, let's do that. Now you can see that just as we expected, there, there's basically nothing except a few stray pixels in the bright areas. The image is looking pretty dark and clearly is underexposed. So it's like you shot this image at ISO 200 instead of 100 you increase the noise and you didn't do yourself any favors. So um, it's better to get the exposure right in the first place. And to emphasize why that matters, let's go in here and let's look actually look at the image. And you might be, I hope you can see this on the video. I'm going to zoom in a little more just to make it a little easier on your eyes. Um, get rid of that histogram guy. So you can see in our blue sky here, this um, is looking pretty grainy. I mean, it doesn't look like a smooth tone at all. It's actually looking like a lot of grain stuff there. If we look at the red channel, that's Command-3 in Photoshop. You can see there's a lot of chunkiness to that, even the green channel. It's pretty coarse looking, the blue channel. You can see that that's clearly got a lot of noise in it. So you are not doing yourself any favors by underexposing by even one stop. And uh, so if you want better images, get that exposure right. So what, what are my recommendations here? And I'll, I'll do a little soapbox here. What I really dislike about uh, cameras these days, and this is true here in 2024, the age of AI, is you get this shitty tiny histogram, which is not a histogram for the raw file. It's a histogram baked based on baking in all the JPEG settings. So depending on your JPEG settings, this histogram will also vary. And it's just, it's really small. I'd like this histogram here to be occupying this very large area. I mean, it's just a stupid layout. You could take all this info, put it over on the right in one in narrow column, and then have a much nicer histogram here, or one overlaid like some other cameras do. It basically sucks. But the main uh, attribute of this histogram, which really, really, really sucks, is it can't it doesn't show you the actual raw capture i mean if you were shooting jpegs well you get what you get but i've been shooting raw and raw only here and this histogram does not show me what's in the raw file it shows me what's in the raw what's in the jpeg that would result with some kind of processing settings which might might were set at the time in other words dynamic range optimization contrast picture profile a whole bunch of crap that you'd have for a JPEG, none of which applies to the raw file. So this histogram is actually very misleading. Um, and it's just atrocious that here in 2024, we still have this crap level of histogram in every camera on the market. All right, off my soapbox, what can you do about it? 
one thing is if you pay attention to this histogram when you shoot your image, uh, clearly this thing could take more exposure. So dial instead of negative 0.7 here, which I goofed on, put it at zero, your histogram is then going to sit pretty close to the end here. However, the histogram can be quite misleading. So you might want to actually shoot two frames, shoot it at plus zero, check your histogram if it looks good, then maybe add another two thirds of a stop and shoot another one. Uh, and let's, and, and, and then confirm that you got it right in Raw Digger. Expect to be a little frustrated because histogram is going to mislead you. All you can do is kind of get, you know, you're not going to get in the bullseye given the poor histogram, but you can at least get a lot closer. So bracketing is kind of your friend here. So let's look at another histogram I've got here. This one was shot uh, just in my office. You can see here the histogram kind of suggests to us that, gee, if, if we had, uh, and, and this was auto metering at plus zero, um, ISO 100, you can see, hmm, well, there's a little left at the end. So, okay, maybe what does it look like? Could we add another third of a stop? You know, if I had to guess, I'd say, well, third of a stop might actually push this out and give us pretty close to the perfect exposure. But does it? Uh, and what's interesting here is we, if we go back to Raw Digger um, and look at the exposure, look at that massive underexposure, dark tones no overexposure even though the camera was blinking highlights in the center completely misleading bs from the camera so lots of underexposure low overexposure and then if we look at the histogram in raw digger what do we see well it's actually less exposed let me go back you can see it's it's basically identical to the landscape scene the green here is pretty much in the same place in this frame here with the greens and actually this exposure is even less and yet the camera was blinking the highlight warning at me so what does that tell us it tells you that the camera camera's histogram display is not bullshit but you know 20 percent bullshit because it gave us a very misleading blinking highlights and showed us that we had an almost perfect exposure when in fact this exposure actually could use more than the, the landscape scene this this bit here would be maybe clipped off which isn't going to matter for clouds we could push this whole thing out here for another full stop for much better image quality so your camera is not working it, it's doing a very ter a really terrible job here again this scene the camera was showing me blinking highlights somewhere in this area and there's probably a few really minor things but basically this is a pretty badly underexposed image for the dark tones i mean it's not that you've got limited headroom to not blow out these highlights, but worse, you've got very large areas of um, underexposed dark uh, stuff. You, giving it another exposure will hugely improve the image quality for these dark areas. So you've got to take your um, camera histogram with a grain of salt back to the histogram for here. This camera basically lied to you. You've got a whole nother stop of exposure headroom you could give it here. Uh, at the very least, you could have gone two-thirds of stop. That would greatly improve the quality of the resulting image in, in like this dark jacket, the dark screen, anything dark in here. The, the no, it, would, it, it would get it way off the black. So you can see in this histogram, it's all stacked up on the left. Those are the dark tones. So you're going to get the, the, a huge amount of noise over a large amount of the image. The, a, most of the image detail, in fact, is in the, these darker tones down in this, this area here. All right, so um, that's your clue to getting a much higher image quality out of your camera. Pay attention to the camera histogram. Make sure you're getting it right by checking it in Raw Digger later. Check your technique and then learn from that in a feedback loop. Each camera behaves a little differently. So if you do this image after image for a couple of weeks, you'll pretty quickly get a sense of how well you're doing on your actual camera histogram and what it's telling you under different lighting and conditions and that will greatly improve the quality of your ima uh, image captures.